Good morning, it's Brian here at Fitzpatrick's Garage, Dublin Road, Kildare. I want to show you this car here, 2017 Honda Civic, Smart Plus, 127 horsepower, VTEC Turbo. This car is a one owner car that we sold originally, really, really nice condition, really low mileage. We are Fitzpatrick's Garage, family run business and operation for almost 70 years. If there's information you want on this car, 086 843 1945. Do call, text or WhatsApp me, Brian is my name, and I'll be happy to go through information on the car in terms of information on your trading or information on financing. Anyway, this car, as we were saying, 127 horsepower, one litre VTEC turbo in a smart plus spec. So what we're going to do is we'll have a look around the spec in the car, we'll have a quick drive as well, and then we'll finish off by looking at the spec on the inside of the car too. So, so starting off on the outside, the first thing on these cars that always stands out to me is this really cool shape. It is a very aggressive looking vehicle. Um, so the colour on the outside is actually a pearl white. So lots of whites are usually non-metallic, it's probably hard to see from the video, but where the sun is there, it's actually a nice pearl, so it's not like a solid white. When the sun shines and it, there's a nice reflective um, uh, grain through the paint. Down through here, this is a front fog light, and this in here is a radar for some of the information we'll see inside the car, which are safety features like adaptive cruise control, lane change warning and stuff like that. In through here, there is a daytime running light, which is also your parking light. This is your dipped headlight. This is your full headlight. And another key thing about the headlamps is when you meet traffic, basically if cars coming towards you, the headlights will dip. When you're going back into a country area, they'll go full themselves. And when it's nighttime, they'll come on themselves as well. And they can be controlled off the key. So that means using your key, basically, when you unlock the car, the lights can be switched on, as you see here. And the other thing that the key does as well is, you can lock the car, obviously. You can unlock the car. And if I hit the unlock button, watch the windows, they start to retract. Uh, which is handy during the summer when it's really really baking warm in the car and you're about to walk up to it or similarly then what I can do is lock the car so hit the lock button hit the lock button a second time and that basically retracts my wing mirrors and it also retracts the windows as well the windows in the front have a UV tint the windows on the rear have a privacy tint. And like we were saying the front of the car is really aggressive but so is the back I love the shape of these cars anyway the lights on the rear of the car are a nice LED all the way around so they look really really smart overall. Uh, along the back then there is a spoiler that comes across here and another spoiler on the roof and actually while they look nice they channel air in the most aerodynamic way off the rear of the car again just keeping in tune with aerodynamics and fuel efficiency and stuff like that. The car in terms of condition normally I'd walk around the panels just to tell you what each panel is like but this car has about uh, 15 or so thousand kilometers on it. It's really tidy throughout. She's done a really nice job. I have not done anything to this car since it came in. This is exactly how she traded it in, so this will give you an idea of the kind of uh, way it's been looked after if we can advertise it straight away. Um, okay, so as we move down the side of the car, oh sorry, before we do, parking sensors are standard along the front of the car. I love these little side markers along through there. And then after that, these are 17 inch, and you see the way they're shiny, so they have that kind of polished uh, diamond cut finish all the way down the side, but because they're black, they keep within the theme of the big black grills in the front of the car, black on the side, black on the rear windows and also black on the back you can see as we go around to the rear of the car. Um, in terms of the rear bumper there is also parking sensors on the back and you also get a rear reverse camera up through here. In terms of the boot, uh, I just need to unlock the car so that is controlled from the key or centre locking in through here while we're here. Things like electrics for windows and mirrors and all that kind of stuff are controlled in through there and then mirrors are electric folding as you saw and they're also heated so when you're driving the motor in the morning you can have your wing mirrors demisted. Okay in terms of the boot uh, one cool thing about these is you can slide that back out of the way and what you're doing then is it's got a really big boot overall. The boot is in excellent condition throughout there is also space down below here for more storage or if you want you can put a spare wheel in through there and then once you're happy with what you have in the boot you can close this over some people used to give out that's a little bit flimsy but i disagree because every time i use these cars to go on holidays i've got this absolutely massive load area to throw stuff into the car and then after that i've got the flexibility of actually being able to put more stuff which i wouldn't if i had a regular parcel shelf so as we were saying condition in the car is really good because the mileage is low and it's only had one private owner from you the car is really aggressive looking, that's one of the things I like about it, but one of the other things is driving in these cars. I love driving these cars because there's quite a nice driving position in them. It is a low car to the ground, so I suppose depending on what height of the car you want, these are low to the ground, but that's why the, that is one of the things that actually makes them nice. The steering. Uh, obviously it's adjustable in and out and 
up and down, you can get a nice position. The gearbox in these cars is so sweet, it's so nice the way it changes gears, it's really precise. And even if you read all the independent reviews on them, uh, it's one of the things that people always comment on. Uh, but on a back road like this, the car is wide, so it feels really kind of sure. And it gives you kind of good old confidence when you're on a back road like this, so they drive really, really well. In terms of acceleration, this is, as we were saying, one litre turbo, 127 horsepower engine. You'll see what the acceleration is like here. So let's just say first gear, if we start off, to give you an idea, acceleration, first gear, into second. So starting from scratch as we join the motorway. Second gear, and the third. Now we're not being hard in the car, the car is well able to do this, we're underneath the red line always. In terms of acceleration, say for example, fourth gear, 100 kilometers an hour, if we floor the car now, because this is the kind of driving that people normally do, and we're up to 120. So, as you can see, the acceleration is good for a 1 litre turbo engine. It's actually fun. So basically, combining the engine and the way the car is set up in terms of handling and stuff like that, it's a really enjoyable package overall to drive. And this car, as we were saying, it's really tidy. Just about 15 or so thousand kilometers on the car for a two-year-old car, and it's been really well looked after. And the thing about it is, I suppose, for some people now, they've realized that they don't actually need a diesel car anymore. Realistic fuel efficiency on a car like this is somewhere in the region of about 6.5 liters per hundred kilometers. So anyone that's buying one of these, I'm confidently saying to them, you're gonna be somewhere in the region of about 6.5 liters per hundred kilometers, which is about 45 miles per gallon. That is, we'll say, Unless you are doing a lot of mileage, and I mean 20 plus thousand kilometers a year, a petrol car like this makes more sense. And I used to find on some of the other Civics before, people used to buy the diesels because the diesel had a bit of get up and go, whereas the petrol was non-turbo and there's was a bit of a flatter acceleration. On these ones now, this is where people can actually drive the car, get the enjoyable acceleration that they used to get from the diesel, but they don't have the worry, I suppose, of having to manage the diesel engine. Um, the engine, it's out two years. It's a one liter three cylinder turbo. Uh, it's been quite reliable. We haven't had issues with it or anything like that. Anyway, let's have a look around the features on the inside of the car. So moving around to the inside, if we open up the door, in terms of the rear, the first thing then you see, again, as I was saying to you earlier, condition is really good in the car, so uh, the door card almost looks like no one's even ever lent up against it. Speaker, tweeter. After that then, kind of brushed aluminium along the doors. After that then, electric for window in through here, and child lock over through there. The seating is cloth. There is three head restraints. There is three three-point safety belts. There is an armrest in through the center with a drinks holder. And then there is Isofix over here for child seat and there's Isofix over there for child seat and the seats also fold down flat. I forgot to show you. So when you do that, you get a really, to be fair actually, once you do that in these cars, you're into kind of the same sort of space as you'd have in a car style van. Oh my gosh, I gotta do this. Okay. So it's just ginormous. It's so versatile. So in terms of the rear of the car, this is the headroom that I'm looking at. So if I'm six foot and I kind of dug myself back into the chair as much as possible, this is exactly where I am. Uh, one thing that stands out to me is the nice black headlining over my head. In terms of uh, legroom, it's quite good in front. And in terms of visibility all around the car, actually, it's quite good. So when I'm sitting here, this is what I see all the way around the car and same looking out the window. And the reason I'm saying that actually some cars these days, this area comes up quite high, so it kind of obstructs your passenger's uh, visibility out. Uh, and these doors actually have side impact protection beams as well, same as the front doors too. Moving up into the front of the car, so as we were seeing already, brushed aluminium continues along there, same onto the door handles, and as we saw a little while ago, electrics for windows and mirrors and stuff like that. The seat, again, cloth, and also then height adjustable along through here. The rear part of the seat is also adjustable, and this is lumbar support to harden up the bottom part of the seat. As we spoke about earlier, that steering wheel is rake reach, so it goes up and down as well as in and out. There is aluminium pedals on a Smart Plus model. Up through here, then we have collision mitigation and lane departure warning. So collision mitigation, under 32 kilometers an hour, if you slam on the brakes, um, sorry, collision mitigation. If you don't touch the brakes under 32 kilometers an hour and the car senses something in front of you, it's gonna try and stop you. And then the lane departure warning, all it's doing is, as you 
cr cross the white line without using your indicator, it's going to vibrate the steering to say that you've crossed the white line without maybe intentionally doing it. Parking sensors front and rear. Well, parking sensors making noise as we drive towards this white board in front of me. It's telling me in through here that I've got an obstruction and it's also telling me in through here that I've got an obstruction. And similarly, because we have a reverse camera, when we go backwards we have our camera, but we also have parking sensors. So as we go back towards this mark, a little bit slower. So again, similarly, it's telling me I've got a problem here. I can have different views on where I am overall. It's telling me I've got a problem here, and then if I turn the steering, I've got dynamic guidelines on the camera. So sitting in one of these Honda Civics. There I am there. Anyway, uh, this is exactly what you see. So, uh, so let's just see back a little bit further so you can have a better view. Right, uh, speedos in through here, fuel gauge over here, temperature gauge over here, and then this is exactly where everything is laid out. So in through here, I have an armrest which opens up with drinks holder in through there, parking brake for engagement or disengagement down through there, brake hold which holds you on a hill and stops you from rolling backwards, economy which reduces how aggressive the air conditioner is and then auto stop start which is going to stop the engine at times when you're uh, maybe stopped at a traffic light where the engine doesn't need to be running so it can save you some fuel. Gears are six forward and as we we're saying that is such a nice gearbox to use. Up through here, um, so when I'm driving I can look over here hit my climate button and then it's all touch and swipe up through there. Home is going to bring me back into the overall once I close down the climate section and go into OK and home is going to be the start off point on the screen so uh, when we're looking at that in through there uh, I've got phone information in through here it's all touch and swipe navigation in through here which is going to be Garmin navigation uh, settings in through there for general all sorts of different settings on the car uh, just to show you how the screen looks with navigation with dust there actually uh, and then back no, into like that, audio over here uh, trip information in through here smartphone connection then is going to be things like apple carplay or android auto so you can use google maps and things like that as well so very cool and easy to use uh, again looking back as to what we are looking at when we're looking at the car steering wheels down through here so this is going to be for bluetooth trip information here for average speed fuel efficiency by pressing this button it's all changing up here so that's going to be information such as as radio information, phone information, uh, maintenance information, fuel usage, navigation, speed sign recognition. So it actually recognizes the actual speed signs. And that links in then to your cruise control. So you can actually have your cruise control to say, right, keep me at 100 kilometers an hour, or you can limit it to say, don't exceed, you know, 100 kilometers an hour, or you can say, don't exceed the speed sign. So when it sees the speed sign, it'll actually slow you down. So it's really, really good that way. Wipers over here, um, just off the steering wheel, are automated. And then like we discussed earlier, lights over here are also automated as well. So as you we were saying, when you're looking out of the car, wing mirror over here, this is what you see down over through here, your electrics and stuff like that. Some of the other buttons we talked about as well, uh, your cruise control. And the other thing as well, we said down here, lane change warning, but this is a lane keep assist. So once we put on the cruise control, we can actually have, sorry, once we put on the main kind of control over here, we can first of all set our cruise to say, keep, you know, three, four, two car lengths behind the car in front or we can set up lane change, sorry, lane keep assist. So one of them basically is trying to warn you if you drift out of lane, but the other one's actually keeping you within the lane. So that's pretty cool. Uh, after that then, driver's airbag, passenger airbag, side airbag, down the side of the seat has an airbag as well. And similarly over here on this side of the car, everything's in excellent condition throughout as well. Um, anyway, uh, hopefully this has been useful for you overall in terms of what is in the car and what it's all about. Uh, so anyway, Brian's my name, 086-843-1945. If there's information you want in the car, please do not hesitate to give me a shout. 086-843-1945, give you information about finance and trade-ins and all that kind of stuff. This, as you we were saying, is 124 horse, sorry, 127 horsepower, one liter turbo VTEC Honda Civic. Uh, one owner from you, just about 50 and odd thousand kilometers, so really nice condition, pearl. Uh, orchid white pearl on the outside so oh yeah one other thing I forgot to say to you actually is uh, this is USB connector in through here and then over through here oh my god there's the first bit of dirt I found in the car not too bad uh, right HDMI so we can play a video and another USB connector and that then relates back into what we were talking about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto anyway hopefully the video has been useful thanks for taking time to watch